Here we have 256 plus something equals 484. So with a number family triangle, we know that we add the bottom two numbers to get the top number. But we want to find out what this other bottom number is. So what can we do? Well, we know that if we subtract a bottom number from a top number, we get the other bottom number. So we can work out 484 minus 256 to find that missing number. Sometimes this is called using the inverse operation because we have an addition, but we're using subtraction to find our answer. So we start with the units. We have 4, so we can't take away 6. So let's change 8 tens to 7 tens, and now we have 14. So 14 minus 6 is 8. Then we can move on to our tens, and we have 7 minus 5, which is 2. And then onto our hundreds, we have 4 minus 2, which is 2. So our missing number is 228. So 256 plus 228 equals 484. And if we wanted to check that, we could do 256 plus 228 and make sure that our answer came to 484. Now we have something minus 205 equals 457. So with a number family triangle, we know that if we subtract a bottom number from a top number, we get the other bottom number. But we want to find out what this top number is. So what can we do? Well, we know that if we add the two bottom numbers together, we get the top number. So we can work out 457 plus 205 to find our missing number. This is sometimes called using the inverse operation because we have a subtraction, but we're using addition to find our answer. So let's start with the units. If we have 7 plus 5, we get 12. So we've made 110, which we can write underneath our tens, and we have two units. Now moving on to our tens, we have 5 plus 0 plus 1. That's the 110 that we made from our unit. So we have 5 plus 1, we have 6 tens. And now on to our hundreds, we have 4 plus 2, which is 6. So our missing number is 662. So 662 minus 205 equals 457. And if we wanted to be sure that we've got that right, we could do 662 minus 205 and make sure that our answer did come to 457.